In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at a couple of different ways of creating animated backgrounds. So without further ado, let's hop straight into After Effects where I have a 1920 by 1080 composition setup. Actually, I have four of them because we're going to be creating four different backgrounds, all animated and super sick. We are going to be starting out with the first one, which is a gradient background, very similar to the one in my previous video that a couple of you were asking about. So I figured I'd cover that because it's a pretty cool little technique with a little bit of extra sauce on top to make it look super sick. So we are going to start out by creating a new solid. So just command Y and we are going to make sure that it is black. We want it to be just pitch black and we'll name this background. Next up, we want to use our shape tool and we'll be using an ellipse. So make sure you have an ellipse selected. You can always click and hold to choose between the different shapes. And we want to make sure there's no stroke on it. And then we want to change the fill and we're going to do different layers of grates until white. So we are going to choose a fairly dark gray and this one worked pretty good. 52, 52, 52 for the hex code. Hit OK, zoom out a little bit if need to, and then just hold shift the white clicking and dragging to create a perfect circle. And we'll just place it somewhere right about here. Looks pretty good. And then we are going to create another one. And this time we want to make it a little bit lighter. So just pick a lighter color. This 94, 94, 94 works pretty good. And again, click and drag while holding shift. And you want to make these two different sizes and kind of put them on each side, but we'll animate it pretty easily. So we just want to kind of lay out where some darks and lights are going to be to mess around with it. Next step is to add our very bright bright and we can just do a fully white color or just a slight off white if you want to do. And this time we just want it to be kind of an accent color. So we'll just create a small circle. And for this particular shape, I don't want it to be a perfect circle. I'll just want to draw a somewhat ellipse type looking thing and put it somewhere around the center. This is pretty good. Now we can get to the animating and it's super simple. We're just going to use an expression to drive all of this, which makes it a lot easier on us and easy to get some random results. I'm going to hit U to hide everything. And then I'm just going to select my first layer, hit P to bring up the position. And then I'm going to alt click the position stopwatch and we're going to add a wiggle expression. And then we're going to type one comma 1000. And that's just going to give it a little bit of movement everywhere and just randomize it a little bit, which is perfect for the look that we're going for. Now we can right click on the position parameter where we added the expression, copy expression only, and then select the two other layers and just simply paste it onto those layers and it will automatically apply that expression to the position. Now we have all three layers animated going crazy. From there, we're going to add an adjustment layer and we are going to add a false box blur. You can use Gaussian blur as well. False box blur is just a little bit quicker. Increase the iterations to six. That's just going to make the blur look a little bit nicer. It's essentially just the quality of the blur. And then we're just going to scale it up until we get something that looks pretty cool and blob looking type of thing. So this looks pretty sick. Now we can also add a turbulent displace to this and we'll just add it before the blur and we can hide the blur for now. And then we can increase the amount a good bit to get some pretty wonky looking shapes. Play with the size until you get something that looks pretty cool. The values will depend on the size of your circles and what you're kind of going for. You just want to make sure you don't have any background showing. Turn on the fast box blur again. And now we have something that looks kind of like this. Super random and crazy. You can see we get a lot of little details, so you can always increase the size if you want more larger, slower looking blobs. Increase the blur radius if you want it more blurry. Just depends on the look you want. Now the next step is the fun bit. We are gonna scale the background up just a little bit, just so it covers a little bit of the edges. And then we're gonna take all these layers and pre-compose them by holding Shift Command C. And we're just gonna name this background gradient pre. And we are gonna add an adjustment layer. And now this does use a plugin that is paid. There is an affiliate link in the description if you want it, but I just thought this looked super cool and it just gives it a nice little bit of characteristics, but we're going to bring up FX console and we are going to add what is called flies, eyes, circles. And that's going to create that texture that you see in the gradient that just makes it look like clouds or like a pillow almost. It looks super sweet. I don't know exactly how it works. I just know it looks sick. And now if you play that back, you can see how the circles kind of highlighted in a super interesting way with the gradients. And it just makes it look just very unique. Next up, we are going to add a bit of a curves to our main background. So just add that to the pre comp. And then we can go in and play around with the values to get uh, the look that we really want, kind of drive some of these. So that looks pretty good. We've got something pretty ominous. Now we are going to add another adjustment layer and we are going to add vignette 
to it, CC vignette. That's just gonna vignette the corners a little bit. You can always adjust that however much you want, but I just think it looks pretty sick. And another layer, which is this time just gonna be a solid by hitting Command Y. And then we are gonna name this green and make sure that we have middle gray selected. So 80, 80, 80. Hit Enter to bring that up. And then we're gonna add, add green to it and select whichever preset you want, change the final output and increase the size to something like 1.5. And then we'll add a tint effect to it just to make sure that it is monochromatic. And again, we'll pre-comp this, shift command C and we'll name this grain pre and move all attributes into the new composition. And then we're gonna set the blending mode to something like overlay. And that's just gonna give us some really nice texture in there and just make it stand out a little bit more. That is pretty much all for creating this. If you want to overlay something, let's say you have a bit of text. So we'll just put text right here and scale it up. In its current state, it might be a little bit distracting. What I like to do is above the adjustment layers, I'll just add a black solid, hit OK, and then you can just decrease the opacity of it to put it a little bit more in the background so it's not as prominent. Next up is one most of you should know. If you don't know, then well, you definitely found the right video and that is a bit of a grid background with a little bit of extra finessing in there to make it a little bit easier to work with. You'll typically see this in a bunch of the finance YouTubers like Iman Gazi and whatnot. They use this effect all the time because it just, it's clean, it works well, and it's a great little extra level of detail to add to your backgrounds. But we are very simply gonna start by adding a solid and we'll just name this background. And then we are gonna add a gradient. So we're just gonna add a gradient wrap to it. And in this case, I'll do a radial wrap and I'll set the start of the ramp to the middle of my layer. So for a 1920 composition, that would be 540. And then I'm gonna swap the colors. And for the lightest color, I'm just gonna make it a little bit darker of a gray and increase the end ramp to be a little bit smoother so we don't have it super dark. Then we are gonna add another layer and it doesn't matter what color this one is because we're gonna add the grid effect to it. So that doesn't matter, but we're just gonna name this grid and hit enter. And then again, using FX console, we are gonna add the grid effect. Super simple so far. We have the border, which essentially just decides how thick your border is. I like to put it pretty low to something like two or three, depending on the size of the composition. And then instead of working with the corner point to try and get it the right size, we can change it to either a width slider, which is gonna make every single one a quadrant, no matter what, so it's a perfect square. Or you can do a width and height slider. If you don't want it to be a perfect square, you just want it to be a rectangle maybe, then you can do that as well. We're just gonna stick with the width slider to make it a little bit easier. And then you can just decide whatever size you want. Let's maybe do, this size right here, and then decrease the border to something like two to make sure it's not too overpowering. If you want, you can always change the color of it. But if you wanted to, you can animate this a little bit. So let's say you keyframe the width and you wanna do a zoom in effect. So if I hit you, you can see my keyframe down here and I go forward to maybe three seconds. And then if I increase the width, it'll look like I'm zooming in. Now, if you wanna add that zoom with a little bit of movement, we can keyframe the anchor on the grid effect hit you again to show that keyframe and maybe move forward a little bit and then we can slide this around and essentially it gives us an infinite grid. But this can be a bit tedious if you have a composition where you already have some movement and then you're trying to manually animate it as well. So what we can do is if we move both of these keyframes and then we can go in and let's add a bit of a composition here. I have one set up already, which is just a couple of different layers and it has a little line animating. So nothing too fancy. What we can do with this is if we open up the scale and the position of our pre-comp with all everything that we have in it, we can link the anchor and the width to each of those parameters. That way we can animate it at the same time. So it kind of looks like a flawless camera flowing between all the elements. So if I take my anchor, and keep and pick whip it to the position of the assets and then the width and pick whip that to the scale. We can now, if I scale it up, you can see it moves with it and the same with the position. This makes it a lot easier to essentially fake a bit of camera movement. So we are gonna keyframe both of these with this first one in the center. Then we're gonna go forward to about two seconds and then we are gonna find the next one and let's center that up as well. You can always use the grid if you want to, to line things up just to get them perfectly centered. Maybe a little bit more of a zoom in and just like that looks pretty good. I'm just following the keyframes from this composition. So I have two seconds and then a half a second gap and then it moves again. So again, keyframe all of these, then two seconds forward and we'll go on to the next, just like that. And then you can select all your keyframes and ease them however you want. I'm just gonna use sexy speed for the sake of the tutorial ease all of that. And then now playing this back, we have the camera, a fake camera following along and we have an infinite grid, which is just super sick way of doing it and using 
the power of After Effects and parenting different parameters to each other to create a super easy way of like animating and just way easier than if you had to manually animate the grid. You can always add a little bit of flair to it. Maybe you want to add an adjustment layer with some optics compensation and that will just give it a little bit of that distorted look that you often see in those videos and you're going to reverse that and that'll give you that little bit of distortion on the edges which just narrows down the focus a little bit. You can add whatever else you want to it, a vignette, etc. Next up, we have something a bit similar. We're gonna have a grid floor, which is just like a super retro, cool looking thing. Somewhat of the same effect. We are again, just gonna create a new solid and we're just gonna name this grid. It doesn't matter what color. And then we're gonna add the grid effect to it. And this time we're gonna turn the layer into 3D and we can rotate it and we'll rotate it to lay flat and move it down a little bit to create a floor looking thing and we will hit shift command Y and that's gonna bring up our solid settings and then we can increase the width to cover the whole length of the, the whole width of the canvas. And again, we'll just pick whatever you want width and slight hiders or just a width hider, it doesn't matter. In this case, let's do a little bit of an elongated rectangle, something like this looks pretty good. And again, we can just keyframe the anchor and that will allow us to slide it. So if you just, move it forward, that is pretty good. So now you have an infinitely scrolling floor where you can put whatever on it. You can even duplicate it and then go to rotation by hitting R and then rotate it the other way, move it up. And now you have both a ceiling and a floor with the room for something to go in the middle. Maybe you want like a super cool little title text and add a little bit of deep glow to it. Maybe change the text color to a nice reddish color decrease the exposure of it a little bit to something like 0.5 or click the exposure and add a posterized time, set that to six and a wiggle, let's do 10 comma 0.2. And that just gives us a super sick little flicker in text with a little bit of motion above and below. You can even copy that and paste it onto your grid layers. I like it without, it just looks a little bit cooler. And as you can see, if you just add it to it, it'll of course be bound by the layer itself. So what you can do to avoid that and get like real good glow is pre-comp both of those. We'll name this grid pre, and then we can paste it onto there and that's just gonna make it look a little bit nicer. And just like that, you've made a nice little floor, ceiling, animated grid, super cool title sequence look. Last but not least, we have an infinite tunnel, but it's pretty simple to create. We're gonna start with a rectangle tool. So again, go on up to your shape tool, click and hold and shape, select your rectangle tool. You can make this any size you want. You just wanna make sure you have fill off and then turn on the stroke. In this case, we're just gonna do a white stroke and set it to something like, let's do three pixels. And then we're just gonna draw. You can do a square, you can do whatever ratio you want. I'm gonna go into the rectangle settings and then I'm gonna change it to a 1280 by 720. And that's just gonna make it so that it's essentially the same ratio as a video, 16 by nine. And I just like that look, cause then you can display a video in the middle of the scene. So do that and then lock the size back together so that it'll be proportional the whole way through. And then we just wanna make sure that we have this object centered in the middle. Now you wanna go forward to, let's say about four seconds, set a keyframe for the size, go back to the very beginning and set it to zero. And then you wanna go forward to your keyframe and then you wanna scale it all the way up until it's out of screen. So we have a little animation that looks something like this. And as you can see, the closer it gets or the bigger it gets, the slower it goes. So to combat that movement and make it a little bit more seamless throughout, we're gonna select the keyframes, hit F9 to ease the keyframes and then go into your graph editor. And we're gonna select the last points and hold shift while dragging all the way in. And then do the same with the first two points, drag them towards the right. And that's just gonna make it so it goes slower in the beginning and faster in the end. But because of that optical illusion, it's gonna look like it's actually just moving at pretty much the same pace throughout. Now I'm gonna end this layer right here after it's done, it's out of the frame. We can just trim that down. So now we have this, but that's only one. This bit is a bit tedious. You wanna essentially duplicate it. And I guess you could make this with the echo effect as well, but this gives us a little bit more control. And we wanna move forward and we're just gonna drag this layer out a little bit and then we're gonna see what it looks like with more copies coming in so we can kind of decide on how close do we want these to be together. So let's say this distance is pretty good, it's seven frames. We wanna keep that in mind because we're gonna drag this layer back 
and then we're just gonna duplicate it as many times as you need to, but you don't need to do too many times, we just need it to loop for a little bit and then we can keep that looping. We've made a good few copies, I'm gonna select it all and then using the Motion Tools plugin, which is free and linked in the description, we are gonna offset these layers by seven frames. So in the offset, I'm gonna type seven, make sure step is at one, so it's gonna do every single layer. And then we're just gonna sequence them from the bottom layer and up. So hit sequence and just like that, it sequences all the layers. So if you play that back, we should now have a nice little tunnel created. We are gonna start at a point where it's pretty much covered up. So let's start right here, hit Command R to bring up your rulers. And then you can click, click and drag and you wanna kinda line it up with this edge out here just so we can see when we want it to loop. Hit B on your keyboard to cut that so that we can loop the sequence. Move forward a couple of seconds until a, another shape layer has reached that same point. And then you can hit N and that'll just trim the end of it. It'll just keep looping and looping and looping forever, which is perfect. So we can right click on that and trim comp to work area. And it'll just mean that now we only have this little section that loops. Now we can add the placeholder for our little screen and we don't need to be super perfect with the size because we know what aspect ratio we want it to be from the outside circle. So I'm just gonna click and drag and make sure that I have my stroke at the same width as everything else. Go into the rectangle, rectangle path, unlink it and do a 1280 by 720 size. Link those two together and make sure that our shape is centered up and then we can scale it down to whatever size we want it to be. Maybe we want it to be right about here. And playing that back, we now have this little bit of like radiating flashing things. And it looks pretty cool, but I wanna add a couple more details to make it look more square, like more like a little tunnel you're going through. So I'm gonna hit G to bring up my pen tool, make sure fill is turned off. And what I'm gonna do here is simply get a line from one corner to the other. So I'm just gonna click down here, click up in the other corner, and then hit V. And then I just wanna make sure that it's lined up correctly all the way throughout, going all the way down, maybe move this one just a little bit, just a little bit like that. That looks pretty good and we can put this below our shape layer. And once we have that lined up, I'm just gonna duplicate the shape and then I'm gonna go into the path options on the contents and line it up with the other corners. So taking this down, I'm just gonna drag this down to that corner and this one up to this corner, just making sure I have that lined up pretty good. And the same with this bottom corner. And again, we can duplicate it and then we just wanna make a flat one. For this one, I'm gonna use my grid, one point in the path. Once again, I'm gonna go in and click and click and drag that and we want to make sure it's right in the flat and make sure this is selected too just like that and then if i hide my grid and just like that we have a nice little perspective background type of showcase thing that is pretty much it for this tutorial just four different ways of creating some super cool and unique backgrounds for your motion design work, whether you're doing one style or another i'm sure these techniques will come in handy but with that being said i just want to say thank you and uh, I'll see you again next week. Peace out.